Welcome, welcome, my fellow geeks. Are you excited to be here? Maybe you're a bit nervous. I know how you feel. You want to learn how to become a professional Android game developer, just as myself. But perhaps you don't think you have the prerequisites nor the talent that's needed for game design. I will let you guys in on a little secret. I don't know either how to develop Android games. There you are. Now we see that we're all on the same level. I have just started off developing my own 2D game in Android Studio and I want you guys to tag along on my journey. My name is Alex and I will show you step by step how to create a 2D battleground game from scratch without using any game development libraries. A little disclaimer, I'm well aware that I will not be using the best practice for my game development since it's my first time. But I don't care, no one is using best practice. However. It is important for you to understand that this approach towards creating Android games is much more time consuming than if you were to use a game engine such as Unity for developing your game. Now, if you want to really grasp how to create a game using only Java code, totally from scratch, I would strongly recommend you to follow along this series. You will also improve your problem solving capabilities and learn the underlying math that you need to know for rendering objects in the right positions and that kind of stuff. And one more thing before we start to discuss the layout of the game, I strongly advise you to code while watching. I know, it's easy to start watching the tutorials, thinking that you will start coding later on. But you would do yourself a big favor if you start to code while watching immediately. You can then pause and write your code and rewind if you get any bugs and write any questions in the comment section. Now, let's talk about the game itself. I actually lied when I said that I haven't done any game programming before. So you don't have to worry that we will get stuck even before installing Android Studios. That would be so embarrassing and I would have to get a new identity and move to Denmark and I really don't want to move to Denmark. The game currently consists of a small world made of ground tiles and lava tiles. We have a red player which is controlled by a joystick and we also have blue enemies that spawn in random locations and move toward the player. Enemies are killed by shooting green dots at them, and the enemies damages the player by reaching it. We also have a health bar above the player, and a count of how many enemies we have killed. Finally, if the player is killed, a text displaying game over is shown, and then the app crashes. So far, I've had to learn how to write a game loop with update methods and rendering. And I've also had to deal with touch events, collision detection, simple enemy AI and a bunch of other concepts. To cover what has already been implemented will approximately take 15-10 minute videos. And after that we will start to add other features such as multiplayer mode, game menus, more spells and in-game items. And finally. I will show you how to publish the game to Google Play. Does this sound like a good plan? Let me know in the comment section below. Before I let you go, I want to talk a bit about the meta part of developing that will be covered in this series. Have you ever lost your mind? I know I have. It happens every time that I produce some creative work, such as funny memes or clay statues, and then suddenly, everything is gone. Do you know what I'm trying to say? We will use GitHub to store all our code and assets, and you will learn how to use a command line interface called Gitbash to communicate with GitHub and commit all changes that we make to your own personal Git repository. I have another question for you. Do you like bugs? Do you think they are beautiful? Maybe you even want them crawling around inside your code? I don't think so. We will write tests for all our functions to ensure that we get 97.6% bug-free code. We will also try to write as clean code as possible, with descriptive variable names and comments that explain what the code is doing. This is extremely important if you are collaborating with others, since they will hate you if they had to take over your messy code and spend hours figuring out what the code is doing. That was everything for this time. In the next episode, we will begin by setting up our development environment, and in the episode after that, we will create a game loop. See you in the next episode, and don't forget to like and subscribe!